Ladies and gentlemen, please do me a favor. Please ignore my disgusting ass bed. You know, just ignore it. I know I'm, I'm cleaning it. I just had it clean and I need to put my sheets on. But I'm lazy and I really wanted to record the video. So anyways, guys, so I have some news for you. Slovenia is a country that exists. I know, right? I have no idea. I recently watched the Geography Now video and I have to say, it was actually pretty interesting. A lot more than I thought. I don't know if you know this, but I am actually partially Slovenian. My great-grandparents immigrated from Yugoslavia to Mexico. Now Yugoslavia is a bunch of messy countries in the Balkans, but Slovenia, no, it isn't. Slovenia is kind of like the nice rich guy that got kind of wealthy. And it's in the European Union, pretty chill, hanging out with Italy and Croatia. Okay, bro, so check this out. Did you know that the embassy of Slo in the US Embassy of Slovenia and of Slovakia actually have a meeting every like month or something to check the email that was sent wrongfully to the other country? Yeah, they do like monthly meetings just to see who messed up their names. And that's fucking wild, bro. Listen, man, I can't help to be excited for this country. So let's see what Bart has prepared for us. Slovenia, our last and final Balkan country. Well, actually, the Thracian Peninsula that connects to- Oh my god, can you please just let me have this one f***ing moment? No, but for real, if there was ever a country that could fit nowhere- I mean, that's kind of true, once, though. It would probably be Slovenia. Welcome to the Switzerland of the Balkans. Okay, bro, 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 chill. The Switzerland of the Balkans. I think we need to chill a little bit. Yeah, Slovenia is rich, but it's not like that rich. Or is it? It's time to learn geography now! Alright, I'm gonna change this shirt. Damn, my boy Barbs is getting ripped. He's looking a little bit more swollen, you know? So hey, good for him, I don't know. And as always, we had like a quirky but kind of fun segment. How Slovenia apparently wants to be German or something? Kind of weird, I don't know. For family, it would kind of be like... Oh, Ooh, Slovenia, come join us! Hey! Oh, oh, what? Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good with this wine. Okay. Uh, wie auch immer, uh, ich habe du so doch besucht und... What the f***? Do German wanna be? German you, I mean, you're a fake. Ich habe ein anderes Haus gekauft und... Yeah, Slovenia kind of has a whole other thing going on in the Slavic world. Let's find it on the gold now. Slovenia, which by the way looks like a screaming chicken, is located right at the crossroads of the Balkan Peninsula, South Europe, and Central Europe, bordered by four other countries, Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia. In the west, they have a small 29 mile or 47 kilometer long coast with the Adriatic. It could have been longer if Italy hadn't... Italy. Swooped Italy in gotta take down, Trieste. Which Slovenia you pronounce it Trieste. But that's another Trieste. Story. This also creates a weird triangle shaped maritime... I don't know, look at that small coast. It's making Bosnia jealous. Anyway, we get to see that pure Slovenia has actually some territorial conflicts with a Balkan neighbor. Based on the Dernovšek Račan agreement, the boundaries look like this and give Slovenia a very small 16 kilometer long 2.5 nautical mile wide corridor to the international well, waters. That's nice, the junction I area. guess. But that's not all. Along the borders, Slovenia still claims the left bank of the St. Odoric Canal, built centuries ago, extending about 7 kilometers inland. This thin slice at the narrowest, only about 24 meters wide, has crossed fields with a few buildings and even a casino that is de facto run by Croatia but Slovenia is like eh come on it's ours in fact much of the border confusion is just with Croatia mostly along the historical river boundaries that shifted so everything is a that's mess. the you problem with the beak river the borders Croatia, they always Hungary. get messed up you see the scrambled mess on the Mur and big Kra rivers with narrowly attached amorphous blobs of land head south oh, yeah. the Brezovica, Pro Medlice, look at the Louisiana and Mississippi border. between them okay yeah the dispute wasn't that big of a deal I get it from there the secondary subdivision of the country is, I kid you not, 212 municipalities. 212 municipalities, bro! How, how do the children in school learn a hunt 212 municipalities? That's fucking insane, bro. That's not rad at all. 
In any case, when you come and look at Slovenia, you'll notice that within this small country, there's like a profusion of fusion. Nowhere else in the world can you really get a country that mixes all three of the largest ethno-linguistic people groups of Europe, the Slavs, the Germanic, and the Latin. Which brings us to the notable places section. Now, for such a small country, Slovenia has quite the tourist attractions. It's a country with a rich history, stunning natural beauty, and plenty of cultural attractions, believe it or not. Some of the top notable sites of Slovenia might include Ljubljana Castle, and the Dragon Bridge, the Autonomous hey, that's pretty cool. Arts Center, the prehistoric pile dwellings of Ljubljana Moor, the they wine like regions, some especially shit. in Vipavo, the Honey Cookie Museum, the Planita Ooh. Ski Jump, the traditional herdsman huts nice. in Kandika Planina, and there are too many castles, 500 to 1,000 castles throughout the country, depending on what you consider a castle. There's even one in a cave. And there are Bro, they have a cookie museum. They have a cookie museum. Bro, I'll give up Mexican citizenship anytime soon. Like, please, Slovenia, take me. I need to see that cookie museum. Also, that church was actually pretty dope. And that castle on the cave was also pretty cool. You see, Slovenia is actually pretty fucking cool, man. One in the one you'll probably see on a lot of postcards, Lake Bled Island. I've church. seen that. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that. Only natural island in the country, and tradition says that oh the God, has to carry the bride the only all the way up island, all 99 bro. steps. Well, I just had hip surgery, babe. So change of plans. Oh my gosh. And it's all surrounded by beautiful waters and mountains. And speaking of landscape, it's time to move on to. In like the festival geography. It's often right? said that Slovenia is the sunny side of the Alps. They have so much going on that even parts of the Chronicles of Narnia were filmed here. Lots of stuff to cover. So here we go. First of all, the country is located right in the transition zone between the Alps and the Dinaric Alps that extend into the Balkan Peninsula. The country is predominantly hilly or mountainous, with about 90% of the surface resting on at least 200 meters. I mean, that makes level. sense. It's like an Alps. Is also the third most country. forested country by percentage of land area in Europe after Finland. Yeah, like one of the Sweden. highest, there, right? There yeah. are three main subsections of the Alps in the northern part of Slovenia. The Pohorje, the Kamnik Savinja, and the largest ones, the Julian Alps. In the Julians, you can find the tallest mountain, Triglav, known for its majestic triple peaks as depicted on the coat of arms. Oh, Just okay, nice. Oh, the are there like issues, earthquakes? The Rasha and Divacha fault lines. These fault lines are partially responsible for making the entire western part of Slovenia a karst zone. The word even originated from Slovenia, meaning a landscape underlain by eroded and dissolved limestone, creating landforms like ridges, towers, sinkholes, and caves. In fact, there are over 10,000 registered caves, and many new ones are discovered annually. Whoa. The longest known system in the country being the Migovets in the That's northwest, insane. also part of the Triglav National Park, with about 42,000 meters of tunnel explored. The second longest one, though, Postoina, is way more popular and commercialized, as it was the first cave system to have electric lighting in the world in 1884, and even a train system built for tourists back in 1872. Yeah, no joke, whether it's the green surface of the Logarska Dolina Glacial Valley or the Green Underground River Labyrinth of Postonia. Slovenia's landscape is absolutely speckled with picturesque sights. I'm it is beautiful though, Gata what the fuck? Guy, but yeah, sure. Honestly, I am actually pretty impressed by the variety of the terrain in Slovenia. From snow, alpine regions, to the rugged karst, I think that's the name of the region, right? Karst. To the karst landscape, to the beautiful vineyards. Like, think about that, for such a small country, they do have quite a lot of stuff. I mean, bro. 10,000 caves in such a tiny country, 10,000 caves. I definitely wouldn't go out there and explore them. I mean, I'm scared of my own shadow, but I definitely watch people go out there and explore them. Country also enjoys a surprisingly temperate climate. I mean, if you think about the Alps, you generally think about a cold region. Then we have a Serbian guy explaining some stuff. Enjoy a high level of prosperity and stability in contrast I mean, to the other Switzerland countries. and the Balkans, they right? Only made about 11% of the population of Yugoslavia. They accounted for about a fifth of the GDP nice. and a third of the ex Slovenia I mean, taking the W, right? my so man. When they wanted the independence, it was like, are you sure you want to go out on your own? I mean, it's a scary world out there. Yeah, dad, I, uh, I think I got a cover. Slovenia has been a mini powerhouse in electronics and, and equipment production. Some domestic brands like these produce everything from light aircrafts to motorcycle exhaust pipes and refrigerators. Oh, wow. In fact, Slovenia supposedly has the most tractors per capita in the world. Weird fact, but the fact nonetheless. In addition, they are huge on wine. It is said that there is a vineyard for every 70 people in the country and they have the world's oldest vine still producing fruit at around 440 hmm. years old. And keep in mind that one vine survived centuries of wars, battles, bombings, and a lot of blowing shit up. Someone give that vine a medal of honor or something. I don't know. Hey, that was actually a pretty fun fact. I mean, I like wine. I love wine. I love me some wine. I like it a lot. So imagine drinking wine 
from the oldest vine in the world. Bro, would that even taste good? Would that taste like rusty or like old? Like, you know, I don't know. I mean, now thinking about it, maybe it's not that good. Just 400 anyways, years. Anyways, one other national Jesus pastime, peak. Right. That's right. Specifically with the native Carniolan honeybee. It is said there is about one beekeeper per 200 people in the country. Honey shops selling honey all over the place and honey flavored foods are everywhere in Slovenia. Honey, honey, honey is their thing. <laughs> You know, well, this reminds me a lot when Jerry from Rick and Morty was uh, beekeeping and he was like actually taking care of them and stuff. I think that was a pretty fun episode. And yeah, it sort of reminds me, I know, maybe Slovenia is full of Jerry's. I don't think so. Don't try and take. And speaking of bees. Oh, that's why they have like the honey Gary Harlow. Uh, Gary Harlow. No, 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 no. We're not doing the fake ass Australian guy. We are not doing it. I'm not having any of it right now. Now guys, Slovenia has a Oh, lot here it comes, baby. This is a good segment. Everything from South, Central, and Balkan Europe. Some dishes Come may on, include things give it like me. meatloaf with hard boiled oh, well, egg, scrambled egg soup, okay. and Yoda. That doesn't know, look very like, good. Come here, Yoda, but it's not. Yota, it's Yota. Pucha repa. Okay, that looks good. Right? Sausage, custard okay. cake, layers, oh, strudel, oh, oh strudel. Pizza. Oh not my god. For drinks, they also boast thousands. Oh, that that looks delicious. Especially in oh my they even God. have a beer fountain in Jalik. Beer fountain, guys. Yeah. Do you hear me? Nonetheless, Free the beer? national drink is schnapps. Many people even oh, make nice. their own at home, probably in a tub. So I've actually done my own research on Slovenia. It is renowned for its very vibrant culture. The traditional culinary delights, such as potika and skutli. Uh, God, Jesus, I don't know, guys. Give me a break. These are just some of the treats that the visitors can enjoy. Apparently, also Slovenia has quite the liter, the liter, literary, literary, right? Literally, uh, fuck the literary tradition. Some of the most famous authors like Ivan Kankar, which yeah, I actually knew him before this video. Population-wise, Slovenia has a little over 2 million people, and they have the highest GDP nominal and purchasing power parity in the entire Balkan region. The country is predominantly ethnically Slovene at about 83%, and from there the rest are from a slew of other countries, none super prevalent, but the largest one being Serbs and Croats at about 2% each. And the rest of the population come from mostly other parts of Europe, like Bosnia and Herzegovina, there's Romani people and Hungarians, and so on. They use the euro as their currency, they use the types C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, Slovenia's national language is, no shocker, Slovene. It's a Slavic yeah, language no related shit, to their dude. Balkan cousins like Serbian or Croatian, but it's like way less intelligible and has a lot of weird German twists. In fact, Slovene grammar my, is way oh more confusing God. because not only do they have the singular and plural tenses, but they also have a dual tense to describe pairs of nouns. Here's oh, Jacob Pipkaya explaining. Well, the formal Slovenian language is a unique language because it's truly romantic. It uses the dual grammatical number in addition to the singular and the plural. For example, in English language you would say dog to one dog and dogs to two dogs or more. And now in Slovene, pus means one dog, sa means two dogs, and psi means three Ugh, or more dogs. So I will complicated. also give an example. Romantic? I don't know, dog. That didn't sound very romantic. In the end, though, one sport that is definitely oh, gosh, in their please. element would be mountaineering. That's, how That's you not a sport, but whatever. Slovenia is considered a mountaineering powerhouse. Mountaineering is a sport. That has to do with I'm climbing, sure. tackling a mountain. You can bet a Slovene like these guys will not be far from the elite pack. Respect. And speaking of climbing, I need to Respect. climb my way out of here. Yeah, you know, it makes sense that they really like mountaineering, especially when they have literally part of the Alps. Well, uh, were you expecting me to say something funny or stupid? No, man, I can just be like educational. It is said that in order to be a true Slovene, you must climb the highest peak, Triglav, followed by a custom of, well, goes like this. Wow, we made it to the top what? of Triglav. This is great, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Go <laughs> That's the tradition. They like Many punch? people may live with their extended family. What? And Sunday family Bro, what? lunches are- What? That's BS. No freaking way, man. You're trying to tell me that every single Slovene has to like climb to like the highest peak of the country and like, well, um, it, was it a joke? Was it? it was probably was a joke, right? Yes, kid. 
Yeah. You here all here to get educated again. Music of Heath. Slovenia. For one, they have one of the world's oldest known instruments, the Neanderthal flute. Made by oh, Barebone, discovered in 1995, <laughs> thought to be about 50,000 years old. Today, they moved on to more refined elements. Traditionally, Slovenian music has been heavily influenced by the Germans, Swiss, and Austrians. They are one of the few Slavic peoples that really love to play the accordion, specifically the Styrian, the oldest kind in the world according to Austria, which, you know, those What's Austrians, going on? What's happening to like Keith? The Germans. Not, he doesn't know, have smart. a lot of energy. Right. <laughs> you know, I really like Keith, but I don't know, man. Right now he seems very low energy. Does he want to even be there? I mean, come on, bro. You're very low energy. And with that, let's just do a very quick rundown on the history of Slovenia. In the quickest way I can summarize it, in the late 6th and 7th century, they had their first kingdom, then Charlemagne kind of took over. Then, for like 1400 years, they were part of different German-speaking kingdoms. World War One. they had a short-lived state called the State of Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs. Then the Kingdom of Serbs and Croats and Slovenes. World War II, Yugoslavia, 1991. Independence joins the EU and NATO, joins the European Monetary Union, and those are like the biggest things. I asked you guys, the Slovene geographies, to give me a list of all the famous Slovene people you could think of here are some of the people you mentioned there are just so many of them i'm just gonna put the Ew, list on melania the trump <laughs> melania trump shot this if you want and look these people up tarchin do you want to be a famous slovene do you look at me exploiting animals ha definitely not below me and speaking of uh I don't know, there's no way to really transition from a dog to friend zone. But anyway, here's friend zone. Yes, there is. You can just say, hey, my dog is my friend, and here's the friend zone. Oh, how could I miss that? Dog, man's best friend. Oh. Anyway, as we've yeah. said many times, Slovenia is kind of like the bridge Stupid. between the Germanic, Latin, and Slavic <laughs> peoples. So a you'll see I love those bars. countries generally kind of tie into the mix when it comes to What do you guys think is the best friend of Slovenia, though? I want to say Croatia or Austria. But I'm gonna go for Croatia because I don't think it, for whatever reason, it makes a little bit more sense. But I don't know. What's your guess? Don't watch the video yet. Don't, don't cheat. Maybe I could say Italy? No, Italy doesn't sound right. It'd be funny if they said Slovakia. That'd be hilarious, but I think it's very unlikely. They're friends. For one, with Slovakia, Italy, come on, talk about Slovakia, bro. Relationship. Historically, they were part of many Italian-based kingdoms and empires and rulers, like the Romans, Byzantines, and the Republic of Venice. And today, they still kind of look at the map and say, really, Trieste, come on, Italy. Nonetheless, I mean, yeah, Italian come on, it's a little too much. I mean, you could have been a lot nicer. Relations. When it comes to their Balkan neighbors, Slovenia is basically the uncle that begrudgingly shows up to the South Slavic family reunion only because they are family. And no matter how different you are, you never disavow your family. Out of all the South Slavs, That's Serbians nice. are the largest minority in Slovenia at about 2-3% to of the population, and many have family within each other's countries. There was a little drama when they recognized Kosovo and the rest of the NATO allies Based. back in the day. Which That's a base take. Serbia's mouth, but nonetheless, you know, close. let's Croatia go Kosovo. A close friend, and Slovenes almost always always take a mass migration to their coast for a vacation annually. Of course, there's always a little bit of drama with Croatia as well, considering the unfinished borders. Oh yeah, the borders, so but will bring up the doesn't sound like that big of a deal. Friends, however, almost every Slovene I have talked to has okay. in some way, shape, or form mentioned the same country, Austria. It is often oh. said that Slovenes are like Slavic Austria. Austrians. They do their best to emulate the Austrian really? lifestyle. Really? Austria? The influence is clearly evident in their social structure. Everything from the accordion playing to the alpine mountaineering culture, Slovenes are totally crushing on Austrians. Austria acknowledges them and enjoys their company, but usually pays more attention to Switzerland and Germany, Ooh. which in return only makes Slovenia <laughs> crazier for their crush. And talk they about everything from friend zoning. Dancing the waltz just to get their attention. It's cute. In conclusion, just like Triglav with its triple peaks, Slovenia is kind of like a triple bridge nation that connects the Germanic, Latin, and Slavic worlds, which is why, no shocker, so many people must be in Slov with Slovenia. Nobody's here to punch me. Oh, they're much better. Anyway, stay tuned. The Solomon Islands is... Talking about the Solomon Islands, I think it's hilarious that... Uh, the episode of the Solomon Islands is like a minute longer than the episode of Slovenia. They found more things to say about Solomons than they did to Slovenia. That's funny though, although it has less, less views.
So Slovenes are Slavic Austrians. Huh, I guess it's a nice way of putting it. It's also cool. I also find it really cool that they are a triple bridge nation between the Slavic culture, the Germanic culture, and the Latin culture. When you think about it, they do border Latin countries, which is Italy, Germanic countries, that's Austria, and Slavic countries, which in this case is Croatia and the rest of the Balkans. So I do find it pretty interesting. Also, isn't it crazy that the episode of the Solomon Islands is longer than the episode of Slovenia? They found more things to say about the freaking Solomon Islands than they did to Slovenia. Bro, I mean, come on, they did my boy Slovenia wrong. And I don't know, I guess that's the video, so see you later.